Hey, Shad here with Speed Addicts, the fastest growing gear site on the web. And today we're gonna uncrate the all new Alpine Star Super Tech R10. What's up, Speed Addicts fam? Oh boy, we got a heater for you today. Finally, yeah, you, average Joe, you can buy an Alpine Star Super Tech R10. They're all new flagship. It's really their only street helmet now available for sale at Speed Addicts. And we're gonna tell you all about this helmet today, but before we do that, we got a couple asks. Number one, subscribe. Be up to date, educated, get the first look on all the latest gear coming into the power sports space. Just click that button and we'll do the rest. We'll make sure you're making excellent buying decisions here at speedaddicts.com. Also, while we're talking about shopping, the way you can support us here at Speed Addicts is by shopping with us. There's a link in the description below. They'll take you right over to the complete selection of the all new Alpine Stars Super Tech R8. Ain't it pretty? At speedaddicts.com, when you shop with Speed Addicts, you're gonna get no cost returns. You're gonna get an R, unwavering respect and appreciation. It's really what keeps the lights on over here. So thank you for your support. Okay, top tier racing helmet. We've seen it in MotoGP. There's actually been a few examples that were shipped last year. They came out with a very small direct batch. I think it was a few hundred helmets or something like that. So Alpine Stars knows how to create that hype and trickle things out just a little bit and build that demand. And they've done that here with the Supertech R10. We've definitely been waiting for a long time to get our hands on this helmet and tell you all about it. Is it gonna live up to the hype? Is it worth over a thousand dollars in some cases? Well, you can be the judge after we give you all of the details here and you can expect us to do a shootout at the track with our team test pilot in a separate video coming very soon. We can't wait to put this helmet up against the Shoei X15. So we're just gonna tease that right here. That should be out in a few weeks. Okay, the R10, Alpine Stars, an Italian brand that is synonymous with power sports, especially when it comes to high performance street gear. I mean, they are, for all intents and purposes, the number one leather sport jacket in the world, gloves, boots, you name it. Now, over the last few years, they've gotten into the motocross game. They're on all the top racers at this point uh, from, from head to toe now with helmets and motocross apparel. I say helmets though, because that was their first foray into helmet, head protection where their motocross helmets are the last handful of years. They've figured that out and they're moving on to high performance street helmets, or this is really a racing helmet, but it can absolutely be worn on the street. And um, it is a more aggressive helmet in terms of the angle and the riding position. So it's not necessarily something you're gonna want on the V-Twin, but for sport bike riders, aggressive street riding or track day racing, that's who this is targeted at. So that was a long preamble. Let's talk about the price tag, Shad. You're really kind of hiding the ball here. 999 for the solids, which is the black in front of me. That's a gloss black carbon finish with a matte exterior or uh, rear panel here. So it's kind of like a two-tone solid gloss. And then the white, there's also a white, and those are both gonna be 999. So yes, a thousand dollar helmet for you. But wait, it gets better. You want graphics? Oh, that's gonna cost you an extra two hundred dollars. That's right. 20% premium for the graphics package, which hurts. I'm not gonna lie to you. That is a huge premium for graphics, but they're gonna try to make it up to you by giving you a few extra goodies when you step up to the graphics. They're gonna give you an additional diffuser. So you notice this is the race diffuser. We're gonna go over this in more detail. And when you buy the graphics, you get the race diffuser installed, and then they're gonna give you the shorter road style diffuser in the box so you can switch back and forth. They're also gonna give you a deluxe carrying bag when you buy one of their graphics helmets. This is the team graphic. Um, they're gonna give you uh, a premium carry bag, the extra diffuser, but otherwise the helmets are the same materials and all the same features, weight, etc. Okay, so a few extra goodies plus graphics and get you for an extra two bills. Yes. Helmets have a comma in the price tag now if you want the best ones. That's just how it's going. Everything's getting more expensive. 
I don't know what to tell you, but I will say this thing is checking off every single box. They were relentless. There's hardly a stone unturned here. Now let's get into it. The shell construction on all of the helmets is going to be a multi-layer shell that is 3K carbon on the exterior. Then it's in different kind of higher density carbon underneath that. Then they move to aramid fiber and finally glass. Using those multi-layers is going to allow them to fine tune the shell for the right amount of rigidity in the right places, as opposed to going with just a straight carbon fiber shell, which sounds cool and light, but in reality, carbon fiber on its own can be too rigid and um, put unnecessary forces into your gray matter that you don't want to happen. So if they've gone with the multi-layer shell, which is what most of the top tier racing helmets are made out of these days. The weight, three pounds, seven ounces. Now there are lighter full face helmets out there, but typically not ones that are gonna pass DOT ECE 2206, that is the new standard, and yes, FIM. It comes with the FIM homologation. The uh, hologram is on the chin strap. We'll show you that later. So all the big homologations are being checked off here. And in terms of weight, usually when it comes to the top flight GP helmets, something like this, one of its near peers, that kind of three and a half pound mark is where they're coming in at, not closer to that three pound mark. And some of that is because of the arrow work. We have fins hanging off the side. We've got a big diffuser on the back. These things add weight. That in addition to the amount of EPS that's required to pass the new safety standards is just going to bump up the weight slightly. Now this is about three ounces lighter than an X15. So it's nudging the showy out in the weight department. Just by a touch, three ounces is something that you'll notice. Um, although it's not a huge difference. All right, that's the weight. The head shape itself is an intermediate oval head shape. Can you use it if you have a round head? Yes, but you're going to probably have to upsize a little bit and then make it up with a cheek pad or vice versa. You're gonna to have to play some games with the liner and we'll show you how to do that a little bit later. The great thing is that you're gonna have four shell sizes, which is really what you're gonna expect on a top flight GP racing helmet like this. More shell sizes means you're gonna get a closer fit to your head. Let's turn this around so you guys can see the back of it a little bit. <clears throat> um, so the shell splits are as follows. Extra small, small, they get a shell. Medium gets its own shell, which is great. That's a majority of folks who are racing at this point. Then we have large gets its own shell. And then the fat heads like me share a shell. Extra large and 2X is its own shell with different crown liners. Okay, so that's how it works. When it comes to the fit of this helmet, you're gonna buy it from Speed Addicts. You're gonna know your ass is covered with no cost returns. We've got your back. Um, in case it doesn't work out. But first, you're gonna try it on at home, in your living room, not on the bike. Once it goes on the bike, it's yours. And try it on the living room, you're gonna turn on uh, your favorite show and hang out there for 20 or 30 minutes. Make sure that you are comfortable. And I want you to really focus on the crown. If the crown is feeling good, you're in the right helmet. Uh, if the cheek pads feel like they should be tighter or looser, you can call and talk to rider support and we will get that sorted out for you. There are multiple cheek pads options for each helmet size that we can guide you through. The crown is a different story. If, if you're in a medium and the crown is squeezing you a lot, it's likely you should be in the large. They made a large bespoke um, for that crown measurement. That's probably what you should be in. Uh, in the small and extra small, you can change out the crown pads, but again, you should probably just return the whole helmet at that point. But if it's a cheek face issue, that's something we solve with a swap. Okay, again, remember, no cost returns with Speed Addicts. We're gonna help you with that return shipping. I'm gonna give you that free return label, not nickel and dime you like those other guys, which is a great reason to shop with us to qualify. Make sure the helmet's brand new in the original condition. No test rides, no bugs, nothing like that. All the original um, packaging and we'll hook you up. Live in the lower 48 states as well and we've got your back. Okay, what is in the bag? There's a lot in the bag. There's a lot in the bag. Okay, first of all, you're gonna get one of these two bags. You're either gonna get kind of a simple, more simple helmet sock like this, like you see with a lot of helmets, albeit it is like quilted and it's got a pretty nice weight to it. If you're getting the black or the white, this is what you're going to get with it. If you spend the extra $200 as discussed further, I'm gonna give you a deluxe carry bag with handles, you know, um, it's vented. It's kind of a nice carry bag. There's extra little 
felt and pockets in here and you can put all your accessories because you are getting some accessories. Let's go over that right now. Okay, first of all, if you go with the graphic package, you're gonna get the longer race diffuser installed on the helmet, but they're also gonna give you the road version, which looks like the one on the black helmet. It is shorter, and it is not meant to mate with that racing hump that's on the back of your suit. Now, can you use the road diffuser on the track? Of course, will you notice the difference Probably not unless you are a very experienced track day rider or racer at a bigger track with higher top speeds. It will definitely come into play, okay? Otherwise, you don't have to necessarily swap these out and can use the race on the road. Of course you can. They are held on by a few little snaps plus some 3M adhesive. So you can't always be going back and forth. You're gonna be likely to break a tab. You're gonna have to replace the adhesive strips. So you kind of want to get the one you want in place. Probably not fool around with that too much. You can buy the longer racing version for the solid helmets if you want to do that. That is going to be sold separately. Okay, also in the box, you're going to get a set of tear-off film. You notice that the shields are all tear-off prepped. So if you're going to be at the track, <clears throat> that tire bug debris that's going to kick up on your visor if you have tear off films just like motocross you can rip those and get a new uh, view there so to speak pin lock insert they're going to give you a pin lock insert inside the box no matter which version you get you're going to get the pin lock insert pin lock insert installs on the inside of the face shield it's going to create a dual pane system to reduce or mitigate fog you're going to get one of these inserts but you're going to get two shields you're going to get both the smoke and the clear on both the graphic and the solid. So no matter which version you pick, spending a thousand or spending 1200, you're gonna get the smoke and the clear and one pin lock insert. Now what that means is if you're gonna go back and forth between clear and smoke, you're probably gonna wanna buy an extra pin lock insert if fog is an issue for you because they're not giving you two of these. Can you move them between the shields? Yes, you can, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but uh, just for convenience sake, you might want to spend the money and get a second one. You'll notice if you look very closely, the pin lock insert is installed in the smoke one. You can see the little logo there. And so that's it. It's just on the inside of here. And that's going to create that dual paint system. Ooh, that team graphic, that is the matte finish, by the way. This is the only matte finish, our full matte finish graphic or colorway that's coming out initially, the Supertech R10. So I think this is probably going to be the one to have. This one came out really nice, or at least it's my pick for what that's worth. Okay, let's get into the nuts and bolts here of the helmet itself now that we've gone over what comes in the box. You have a lot of ventilation here. That's one of those things that's just crucial when it comes to racing is an intense ventilation package because when you get hot, you get fatigued, you screw up, and that gets expensive real quick for lots of reasons, so we don't want that to happen. What they've done is they started out with a intake and a window here through the shell and the EPS that is absolutely enormous. And it's gonna be interesting if I can really, oh, there you go. You can see the studio right through these windows. Between the comfort liner, you see the EPS, the holes in the EPS that mate perfectly with this intake system. That is a ton of daylight that you can see through this helmet when you hold it up outside. And that means the airflow is going to be there for you. So definitely one of the largest crown intake windows I've ever seen. And it's got a matching one in the rear that's gonna extract all that hot air out. Okay, you see those <clears throat> holes underneath the diffuser. Ventilation will not be a problem, I assure you. How it stacks up against its closest competitors that's something we're gonna have to see once we take it to the track for sure. Now down low in the chin bar, you do have two different side vents to pull air in through the helmet. It's gonna direct it up into the forehead and then it's gonna go ahead and pull the hot air out the back. But as the airflow patterns, it's also gonna put some of that air onto the face shield to keep you clear. Now these do open and close. If that's not enough air coming through the chin bar, you're gonna remove the plug. 
<laughs> yeah, there's a plug. Uh, I know the piece that has these little plugs too. I, it's like a racing thing to not have a switch. I don't know if they're trying to save weight or space or what, but you have a plug. If you want more max airflow, remove the plug. You'll be sure to lose this quickly. Um, but hey, if you're at the track, you usually want to stay cool. You probably won't want to put that back in. Should I put it back in? Let's put it back in before I lose it. There you go. Okay, in addition to the vent package on the chin bar, oh man, the plug doesn't want to go back into place. There we go. You have the gills. Now these are not just for looks. These are actually extractors. There is a port between the exterior and the interior that's going to remove your hot, dank air out of the cabin. And again, keep you cool, calm, and collected. We like that. So that is the aero, or the, sorry, the ventilation package of the helmet. The aero, this thing has been fine-tuned in wind tunnel to be as slippery as possible. We've talked about the air diffuser packages uh, at length, but it's not just the diffuser. These winglets on the side are making a big impact, okay? These are not just for fun here. They are adding weight, but they are doing so as part of the engineering and the aero package to make this helmet as slippery as possible. Okay, so you're getting the top of the line latest aerodynamics out of Alpine Stars. When it comes to tuning aero, a very expensive process. You know, teams with the big budgets when it comes to MotoGP can just dump a ton of money into the aero work. And it's not only gonna make you have less drag, but it's also gonna make the helmet quieter. And that's one of the big things that I'm hearing about this helmet at the track so far is that it is exceptionally quiet. <clears throat> And for a racing helmet with this much ventilation, that is truly surprising. Okay, let's talk about the face shield here. So we have a class one optically correct, three millimeter face shield. This is injection molded with wind turbulence. Turb turbulence, what are they calling these producers, Matt? Tur turbines, wind turbines, they all have a different name for them. But these little bumps here on the face shield are going to swirl the air in a pattern to have the least amount of turbulence in the air and the least amount of noise and disturbance to your head. Make the helmet nice and stable at riding speeds. Like I said, you're gonna get the clear and the dark smoke, depending on the lighting conditions, you'll be ready to rock. They have kind of a unique face shield lock in the center. It is a very pronounced kind of metal tab here. If I hold it in the right direction, you can see this. So if you wanna bump it into the up position, this is kind of like a demiss setting. You're not supposed to race here. This thing will open if you do that. But if you are cruising, you wanna get some more airflow, you can bump that lock off. Now you can open it. Now you're getting into the detent system and there are several. There you go. And all the way open. I think that was about five different riding or five different positions on the detents. Okay, and they are relatively strong. This is gonna stay in place. They're a little noisy, but this pivot kit is just crazy crazily over-engineered. It's one of the first ones I've seen with metal. So this whole bracket here, the release bracket is a metal piece and then it's got plastic, it's got gears, it's got cams. There's a lot going on. Are the shield changes fast and like reasonably easy? Yes. You're gonna pull this forward and this thing's gonna come off. All right, now you can put your smoke shield back in and you're on your way. It does look like there was a lot of engineering involved in this and it looks overly complicated, but it seems to do the trick and the detents are going to hold. But most importantly, they have done something down here with this lock. They've added on a metal piece on the shield itself. Can you see that little cross member here? And that's really to secure the face shield in the locked position. This is a racing helmet. They don't want the shield to disengage in any situation, be it a crash or otherwise debris coming at you. So they're really confident in this lock system and the way they've reinforced this, that this shield is not going to come off when you don't want it to. Okay, and we've seen some nasty ones, especially MotoGP, people hitting tires with their face, all sorts of stuff. I've seen face shields go flying, that's not good. It's the only thing standing between your peepers and uh, debris at the track, okay? So again, if you wanna pop that up, get a little bit of airflow, you're on the street, you're going a little bit slower, you could do that. Tear off posts, we already talked to you about that. On the inside, you have the pin lock insert tabs that you're gonna hang that pin lock insert off of. And that is the face shield. Nice face shield package, and it's great that they're including that dark smoke considering 
you're spending a thousand dollars. Yes, a thousand after taxes. That's uh, that's a pretty penny. Okay, you can ship it to your friend's house. We do it all the time that way. You know, the better half doesn't need to know about this purchase necessarily. I'm not recommending that. I'm just saying I've seen people do it. Okay, let's talk about the iPort here. We have first of all we have a breath guard that's also included. Then you have a 220 degree lateral vision of this helmet. So checking out the periphery. They've even done an extra relief down here. You see that this isn't like a standard elliptical opening. It has this little extra channel here to give you just that small edge when you're checking on the competition or you're checking a lane, you're riding on the street, maximum amount of vision that they could pack into this thing and still be safe is what they've done. Okay, that is the face shield, the eye port, the exterior of this helmet in general. We've done it all. Let's flip it over and show you the interior because there's a lot more to talk about here. First off, when we get to the bottom of this helmet, you're gonna notice it's got more curves than, I don't know. I was gonna say Sofia Vergara, but they said that was like 10 years ago or something. So I guess we're gonna go with Kim Kardashian. Helmet's got a lot of curves, guys. And that's cool because it looks awesome. I mean, this thing is just spectacular looking but there is some function baked into these curves. Now, number one, we have a collarbone relief here. So the bottom edge of the face shield or of the, the actual opening of the helmet has been raised up. That is going to look like it's just fabric here, but underneath this fabric is EPS foam so that if the helmet comes down in an accident and impacts your collarbone, it's the EPS foam and not the hard shell that is going to potentially injure your collarbone, okay? So we have a relief there. Otherwise, it's aerodynamics, and that's what the channels and the curves are about, or maybe just to be dramatic. One problem that these curves cause is going to be the comm system. So does it have speaker ports? Yes, it does. Can you use a comm system? Absolutely. Where the hell are you gonna mount it? I don't know. I think right about here with an adhesive mount is going to be your only option, because typically, you'd put it here and there ain't no shell there. So I think back and a little bit angled up is going to have to happen with an adhesive mount. You can get it done here. Otherwise, none of these other spots right here, there's just not quite enough material to get it in place. Okay, so one downside so far, that's pretty much the primary one that we've challenged that we've seen with this helmet is the comm system situation. Let's look at the interior, buttery soft, Beautiful place to be, all feels like high-end, kind of Alcantara finish, and it looks really good. Alpine Stars knows how to make things look racy and professional, which is cool considering how much money you're spending here. One thing that's not installed on this is actually the chin curtain. You're going to get a chin curtain. It's going to look, oh, it's not gonna look like that. It's gonna look like that. Okay, so there's the chin curtain. It's actually not very pronounced. You're not getting like a ton of coverage with this chin curtain. Uh, kind of funny, like they're gonna go through all this trouble. You think it'd probably stop somewhere like that, but it is included in the box. If you wanna run it, it'll quiet things down a little bit. Okay, back to this helmet. You're also going to get a wind guard. So there's an extra piece of rubber trim. You see how this is coming off the bottom edge of the helmet. You don't have to run this. I've installed it. I like these. They quiet down the helmet quite a bit. I actually like them better than chin curtains because I'm actually not fighting with the chin curtain when I go in and out of the helmet. The interior is an eight piece liner. There's a lot going on on the inside to help you be comfortable and also mitigate en energy. But the first line of defense, we have the emergency quick release cheek pads here. So if you're in an accident, EMS has to remove you from the helmet more carefully. They're gonna go ahead and grab these little tabs and remove the cheek pads like so, and then take you out of the helmet. Double D ring closure. And this helmet is also ready for a hydration system. You're gonna plumb in the hydration through right here, and it's gonna come in through that cheek pad. So you're gonna just put your hose right through there. Um, you do get a little bit of extra reflection right there, so you get more visibility. Let's go ahead and remove these cheek pads out of the way. Everything's antimicrobial, of course, washable, serviceable, and relatively easy in terms of, we've already broken this helmet down as we do 
when we're uh, learning about a new product. And I will say that the liner and the cheek pads all go back together quite a bit easier than a lot of the helmets I've been working on lately. So that is nice. So this is a 30 millimeter cheek pad that's coming stock in the medium. There are different size cheek pads. Like I said, if you want your cheek pads to fit thicker or thinner after you get your R10, talk to our team. My recommendation is always to go with a snug fit, as snug as you can pull off without being uncomfortable because the low density foam in the comfort liner is going to pack out. And you notice there's quite a bit of that there. So once you sweat in this, after a few races or rides, it's going to come in and foam or form to your face. Okay. Also, that is part of the neck roll down there. So if you ever want to replace that in the future, you can do so. There is your other cheek pad. Now, with the cheek pads out of the way, you can see that is EPS right here. That is the collarbone saver. And so the EPS liner continues down where the shell has stopped. And that's to protect that collarbone. They do have speaker pockets. They're gonna be covered by these little chamois here. We'll go ahead and get those out of the way. Okay, now if you wanna remove the rest of the headliner, you're gonna go ahead and pull that out. And there's two snaps back here. We're gonna carefully remove those. And then they've gone with this eyebrow style connection up in the front, which is great. That way you don't have snaps in the front or any hot spots. So you notice the crown liner. There's no top pad here. The top pad is separate. And this works in combination with the top pad to give you an adjustable height and angle. So you can change exactly how forward or backwards and a little bit of the height of how the R10 sits on your head, which is great in racing conditions. Everybody's body and ergonomics are a little bit different. Every bike's a little bit different in terms of where your tuck position is going to be and where you want that eye port to sit on your head. So racing helmet, race fit, and customization is what you're paying for here. Let's go ahead and remove all that. Okay, you notice there are the, the speaker pockets. So you have a nice, big, deep speaker pocket here in the EPS. Again, the placement of the comp system is gonna be a little bit dicey, but I think you could figure it out if you're properly motivated. Now, there's that top pad that is part of the safety system. So underneath the top pad is a low friction piece of plastic that's going to help you deal with the rotational energy management system. There's a brand of this system that starts with an M that I won't mention, but it's the same idea. Let's go ahead and pull this out of place. Now there's three positions oops, for this. This is, I'll show you once I have this out, where this top pad can mount that's going to adjust the fit of your helmet. <clears throat> like I was just talking about. So you three, see those, there's multiple settings here. So that's how you get that angled adjustment. Okay, there is that low friction plastic and then you have your top pad. These are separate pieces. Now this plastic sits against the EPS and you notice when you open this helmet up, one of the things that really jumps out at you is that the EPS is shiny and that's done on purpose. They've given it a high gloss to reduce the amount of friction because when the helmet hits the ground and if you don't have a system like this, if it sticks, the connection between your head and the helmet sticks and doesn't allow that slip, then you're gonna put more G's into your noggin, which is something you're trying to avoid here. Now that's one of those reasons this helmet has been able to pass DOT, EC2206, which is the latest safety standard, and FIM. And now EC2206 and FIM both have a rotational energy uh, management component to their testing regimen, okay? So manufacturers are paying attention to that because that twisting is definitely something that's been proven to cause concussions. All right, there is that interior. See, if I step out of the way, see those windows going through, all that airflow right into the back of the studio, and then we have more of another big port on the back for extraction. So that is the comfort liner system, eight pieces if you were counting. And then the EPS itself is another eight pieces. So you see there's a lot of seams here. Now I know some manufacturers have told me all these different seams between the EPS is not necessarily a good thing. Like it'd be ideal to have a seamless one piece system, uh, says some folks out of Japan. But this system with eight pieces has six different 
densities. So clearly this has been fine-tuned to perform very well and pass all those safety standards. So it seems like they know what they're up to there. There's that FIM hologram for that uh, homologation. So this helmet is ready to race virtually anywhere in the world. Now, one criticism I do have is that considering how much tech and the feature set packed into this R10, which is uh, virtually unparalleled out there today, they're gonna give you a one-year warranty. So I'm not sure if they're gonna budge on that. Something tells me that if there's something reasonable that comes up, they'll probably take care of you considering how much you're spending here. But some of the competitors in the space have warranties that are going five years. And that's just something I'd wanna see when I'm gonna invest this sort of scratch. It's one thing that makes me a little bit nervous. Otherwise, virtually anything you could think of that you want from the track in your would like to have, must have list for a racing helmet, it's here in the Supertech R10. Stay tuned. We're gonna take it to the track, put it up against the X15 soon. Hope you'll watch that with us. If you still have questions, you're curious about the sizing or anything about these helmets, go talk to our rider support team. They are there to help you out over the phone, emails, or live chats. That's it for today. We'll see you next time to find out what's in the crate.